are. So let's first jump in and just look at our note taking guide and fill in some of our information here. So what is a sphere? A sphere is the set of all points in space equidistant from a point. Okay, it's very similar to a circle. When you're talking about a circle, you're talking about all points equidistant from a point, but it's in a flat plane. When you actually make that into dim, uh, three dimensions, we still have that central point in the middle, but I always swing a lanyard in my classroom to kind of demonstrate it. Okay, my hand is the center of the sphere, and I start swinging the lanyard in different directions. And what it creates is not just a circle, but it creates a sphere too because it creates all the points that are left and right, up, down, and in corners. So that's how I demonstrate my sphere in my classroom. Okay, what is the radius of a sphere? Well, that's pretty easy. It is from the center, the segment, from the center to any point on the sphere. And we know that those are equidistant because from the center to any point on the sphere, it's just like the radius of a circle, but we have to think about it in three dimensions. Okay? Great circle. Great circle is not a circle that's drawn really well. <laughs> it is actually the largest circle that can be drawn in a sphere. And so I've actually got a little picture to kind of show you what I mean. Okay, if you have a sphere and you start slicing it, okay, the great sphere is not this one up here, or the great circle is not this one up here. That's not the largest circle that can be drawn. It would be like the equator in the center of the sphere. It is the largest circle that can be drawn inside the sphere. So it is the largest circle that can be drawn in a sphere. So you're slicing a sphere through the equator. And so an equator is really the best example of what the of where the great circle would fall. So if you have a sphere like on the earth, the equator is right there at the the very center point and it is the largest, right? The largest circle that can be drawn if we slice a sphere. Okay, hemisphere. What is a hemisphere? Well, you've heard of it in science. A hemisphere is just what? Half of a sphere. It's hemi means half, just like semi. So it's half of a sphere. So if we take a sphere and we cut it in half, we have a hemisphere. Okay, so like an igloo is a good example. I like to draw my little igloo because that makes sense to me. Okay, so let's look at a couple formulas that we're going to be using. Okay, first of all is surface area. Surface area is just 4 pi r squared. And if you look, pi r squared is just the area of a circle, so all we do is take it and multiply it by 4 to get the surface area. So it's pretty easy. Okay, now for the volume. Your volume is three-dimensional, so you're going to actually cube your x, your radius. So be very careful. Biggest mistake, kids forget to cube the radius in volume instead of square it. So it's four-thirds pi r cubed, and that's the volume of a sphere. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples here. It says, find the surface area of a sphere that has a radius of nine. Give both the exact answer and the rounded decimal answer. So an exact answer always has 
a pi in it because that's the exact value. It's not estimated or rounded. Remember, when we actually multiply pi out, it's, it's an estimated answer. Okay, so let's find the surface area. So we're going to use our surface area formula. So let's write S equals A, I'm um, sorry, S equals 4 pi r squared, not A pi r squared. Okay, so we're just going to take 4 times pi, and then our radius is 9. So we're just going to square 9. So 9 squared is 81, so we need to take 4 times 81, so let's not make any silly mistakes. Let's go over here and do 4 times 81, and I get 324. So we're going to get 324 pi as our exact answer, okay? and that's in inches squared because it is area. Now we need to do the estimated or the approximate answer. So all we're going to do is take our 324 and we're going to do multiply, you can just leave it in there, and do times pi which is second function and caret and we get 1017.87. So the approximate answer is 1017.87 inches squared. So that's an approximate. Okay, so there are both answers and you need to be able to identify them in both forms. If you get to a standardized test and get it in terms of pi, know what it lo should look like and then you need to know what it looks like multiplied out also. Okay, now let's do a volume problem. Number two says find the volume of a sphere that has a diameter of 10. Okay, so we've got this time a diameter and not a radius. And our formula for volume, let's slide this down for just a second, our formula for volume involves the radius. So we're going to have to figure that out first. So if the diameter is 10, our radius is what? 5. Okay, so now we've identified our variable. We write our formula down, 4 thirds pi r cubed. And remember I told you a lot of times students forget to cube that. So I'm going to have 4 thirds times pi times 5 cubed. Okay, what's 5 cubed? Please don't say 15. It's 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. So 4 thirds times 125 pi. Okay, when we have a whole number we stick a 1 under it. So 4 times 125 is going to give us 500. Yep, so 500 over 3. So our exact answer is going to read, sorry, 500 thirds pi and that's centimeters squared. That's 500 thirds pi centimeters squared. To find an approximate, we'll take 500 divided by 3 times our pi button and we're going to estimate that to 523 point, what's that, 60? Yeah, because 598 would round to 60. So the approximate value is 523.6 centimeters, whoops, cubed, cubed, not squared, cubed. Okay, so there is how we use our formula just going forward. I always think of a forward and backwards. So it's easy, we just plug in and do the formula forward. So